Hey guys, Omar here. I just wanted to do a little video on this bad boy, the Tech 21 Fly Rig 5. I just picked it up from uh, Long McQuaid, and if you don't know what that is, it's the big music store in Canada. It's on sale right now for $3.15, which is a great price for this. Um, so far I've loved using it. I just, uh, I've seen a lot of videos online where it's people going straight into Pro Tools or Logic or right into their amp and not really interacting with any other pedals. Pedals. This is by no means the only way to use this pedal, but this is just the way that I use it in the context of my band, Century Thief. Uh, if you like any of the riffs that I'm playing, and want to hear it in full band context, uh, I'll put the link right there. I don't know if I can do that yet. <laughs> cool, let's do this. So for this video I'm going to use my Mexican Telecaster. The neck pickup is stock and then I put hot rails in the bridge. I'm going to be using the middle switch for probably the whole video. Got a coily cable going to my pedals. And then I'm going to, into an Epiphone Valve Junior, although live I use the Tech 21 Power Engine 60. And with the Flybrake 5, sounds awesome. Alright guys, so from my guitar I'm going into the Bayang Fuzz Star Baby Boom. From there I'm going into the Electro Harmonics Micropog. And there to the Flybrake 5. From there I'm going into the uh, Digitech Turbo Flange, Stereo Flange, right? Um, and from there I'm going into the Bayang Tri Reverb Baby Boom, and then to the MXR Carbon Copy Delay, and the LPB1 Electro Harmonics uh, Nano. So I should mention that I got the Fuzz Star, the Turbo Flange, and the Tri Reverb as a uh, Part of a trade and they have yet to really uh, make their case to stay on my board but they're just new toys so I figured may as well just put them on right but I've been using the Microprog for a while I love it the carbon copy delay has been my delay for years and I recently got this uh, this boost I'm not going to use it but uh, it's basically a straight boost I found that it colors my tone a little bit in the low mids um, it just boosts that a little bit, but more or less, it's just a straight, uh, straight boost. Um, looking online uh, on the Tech 21 site, they said that you want to put stuff like distortion, an octaver, and waz, any tone-related uh, pedals before the uh, the fly rig, and then you want to have any time-related pedals, well, pedal pedals. I just can't say that word. Um, after the fly rig 5 and <clears throat> the way the signal flows through it goes through the distortion the plexi distortion the sans amp and then the delay in that order and when I first bought this I had the boost in front of everything because that's how it used to uh, be on my old rig um, however I find that the sans amp really uh, took the signal when it was on it took it and it compressed it a bunch and didn't really give me that volume boost that I was needing. There's six people in my band, so I really need, if it's getting really noisy and I'm about to play a solo, this thing comes in, in real handy. This is my bypass sound, going straight to the Valve Junior. <laughs>
So as you can see, it really adds to the uh, the highs, and I find with the, the Valve Junior, there isn't a lot of highs, it's very mid-low, um, like almost like a grunge, especially if you really crank this. Um, so this kind of corrects that, and I really like that. And uh, as you can see, I'm not sure if you can actually see, but I have the level at probably 1230-ish, and then the drive is straight up at noon. So moving on to the plexi part. This is what I use as my main distortion right now. Uh, the hot, it's right now I have it set to one, and I find that it doesn't really do that volume boost that I'm looking for, which is why I ended up um, putting that line booster on this on this rig, as you can see. sound a little more punchy and a little more uh, distorted but it's again it's not that volume boost that I was looking for so moving over to the fuzz star the plexi I use for most of my distortions there's a couple songs that I have where I use the fuzz star <laughs> Star sounds the fuzz star sounds awesome with the microphone. huge fan of this pedal and I originally put it after the octaver and I felt that it couldn't really handle um, the tone of the octaver and it just ended up sounding really muddy but having it being the first thing that my guitar goes through I really like it I like the way it sounds now moving on to reverb and delay when I got the fly rig I already had my own delay and reverb and as I'm sure you know, there's a reverb and a delay on the fly rig. So the reverb I always have set at a, about 11:30, and it sounds like. It's pretty subtle, and I like it just on all the time, more or less. Um, but if I'm really looking for something like, you know, lost in a bathroom kind of effect, I go to this one. Just so you know, I switch to the, uh, the neck pickup. sound. Now for delays, uh, I normally use my carbon copy delay uh, for like lead solo stuff, uh, just general delay. It's, it's kind of like a slapback. That's the setting that I have it on right now. And uh, like I said, I've had this pedal for a really long time. I love playing with it and I can do a lot of cool stuff like, you know. <laughs> Wow. 
But generally for like lead stuff, I have that sound going on and just, you know, for example. <laughs> something that is more than, uh, you know, a quarter note or eighth note feel delay. Um, I have the tap tempo here, and it's really great when I'm playing uh, with my band, and, you know, you can't always adjust that with just a tiny little knob. So, uh, for example... point out some things that I don't like about this. Um, first of all, I feel like a lot of people have mentioned in videos on YouTube the knobs are small, and they are small. It doesn't bug me too much, um, but the EQ knobs on the Sans Amp, sometimes they get a little, a little stiff, and they're already small, so when you're in the middle of a, of a song playing live, and you need to go down and, you know, you need that extra boost, or like, you can't hear your lows or anything, it's, uh, it can be a pain, for sure. Um, another thing is, like I mentioned in the video, the tone knob. Um, zero is about seven o'clock, and I have it at nine. So that really doesn't do anything for me as a knob. I mean, I have it almost dialed back to nothing. The hot, like I mentioned again, it doesn't give me that boost that I'm really looking for. And the last thing is the drift. It modulates the pitch of every of every delay, and um, I have it. I have a little bit dialed in when I uh, do use this delay, but I find it really cheesy. It's pretty corny. Um, besides that, this thing is 315 Canadian. That's 300 American, uh, and I guess like 250, maybe 220. English pounds? Uh, I don't really know. Uh, it's on sale right now along the Quaid. Great buy. Uh, it's made my rig a lot lighter, a lot more versatile, and it's just a lot of fun to play with. So I definitely recommend this. It's nice and small. Um, another thing in my rig that you probably saw was the LB1. Even though I didn't show it, uh, like I said, there's six of us in Sentry Thief, so whenever I need it, it's just got that extra boost brings me above everyone else. This regular is $50 Canadian. That's awesome. If you're in a situation where you're playing in a really loud band, sometimes you can't hear your solos or something, definitely a really good buy. And the last thing was a new tuner, the Spark Tuner. This thing is great. I, uh, it's the most accurate tuner I've ever owned. I thought I would have to like maybe calibrate my guitar, like tune it perfectly and then Put it on my guitar and it would never leave the guitar or something, but I just put it on anything and it works off. I love it. So uh, this is a definitely a great buy. I used to have the Fender, I don't even know if this was, PT100, and uh, like the stop part stopped working, so you really have to kick it to, to turn it on, and the I tune my guitar and then turn it off and it'd still be out of tune, so this is a huge buy for me. It also has a tap tempo metronome, uh, which is really great for when you're practicing and you find that perfect uh, tempo, you can just be like, oh, it's 116. So next time you play it, you can just type in 116 and uh, you'll be playing at the right tempo. Anyways, anyways, I hope this helped. If you're looking at buying the Fly Rig 5, um, please comment below if you have any questions about my rig, any comments. Don't hate, 
That's all I can say. Uh, you know, share this video. Check out my band. I'll put it there. Or there. Or up there. I'll put it there. Anyways, see you guys.